Hey guys, today on Shoki Review, we are coming down to the end of the IBO HG kits with the Grays Ein. And this thing is big. <laughs> for, for an HG kit, especially a Grays, it is sizable. Now, we'll talk about the box art here a little bit. And you get a great shot of the Grey's Ein just like towering here with his giant axes. And, you know, as always with these uh, kits, you see the progression of the series through the box art. And here it is smashing his way through the city into the final fight. And over here, you get a great shot of Ein, well, basically just looking nonchalant and slightly pissed off. But we'll talk about Ein a little bit more later. Here we've got the IBO banner, HG Iron Blooded Orphans tag, and then just very simply Grace Ein right there on the side. And of course, it's an official Bandai product because that is what we buy here. Come to the bottom of the box and get a great action pose of the really, really big Grace Ein. And it is very flexible. And these axes are just cool because, well, let's just be honest here, they are. Get a great little shot there of the shoulder mounted weapons and we'll look at that more in detail later. You can see it here reaching behind and grabbing the axes off of his back and get a great shot of it well basically being incredibly flexible for something of its size and uh, kicking and <laughs> standing on one leg. This thing is incredibly stable once again we'll look at that in a minute. Here you get a shot of the weird eye gimmick you can play with it's really fun compared to normal grazes. And you come down here, some more action poses. Now, totally, until I looked at this, I completely forgot those were there. <laughs> There's actually some boosters folded up in the leg. Good thing I looked at the box. I would have totally forgot to see that. You come over here, and you instead of the customized box, you get the display box, and it shows it fighting against the Barbatos sixth form, which pretty much is what it says right there. And then we turn the box this way and we get a repeat of the top of the box art. And this is number 18, because I think that's pretty much the end of it, guys. There's not a whole lot after 18. Gray's Ein, of course. BandaiHobby.net, go check it out. Come around this way and we get the obligatory front and rear shot of the Gray's Ein. You get a little bit of a read up here as to, I guess, how we got here and who Ein Dalton really is in the updated story box there. They showed this, but this actually was episodes ahead of that. This is actually when Barbatos was entering the atmosphere, at least picture-wise it is. So that's cool. Okay, then come down here. And we got gtiketsu.com, as usual. And the uh, don't let your three-year-old play with this. It will stick in their face and die. We don't want that to happen. We like our kids, right? Over here you get the multitude of plastics that are in the box. This one is also 1,400 yen, although in reality, while it is a cool kit, it does not really kind of come with the same amount of stuff that the other 1,400 yen kits do come with. And then, of course, we come down here. Illustration by Koma and the background image by Saito Yoshinobu. As usual, your work is beautiful, but it's upside down. <laughs> All right, guys, we're going to go ahead and take a look at the Grace Ein. All right, guys, now we've got Grace Ein out of the box, and it is looking big and menacing. And I really do mean that. I mean, they, they knew what they were doing when they made it these dark gray and black and this deep purplish color. They wanted it to just be evil, and they kind of nailed it. <laughs> and if you know anything, of course, about the series, this was the final boss to fight. And, well, we're calling them bosses. Uh, well, not really true, but he was the final big bad. Basically, what happened, Ein was seriously injured in the battle whenever... Uh, uh, Tekadon was entering... Earth's atmosphere. He was gravely injured protecting the Kumaris. So the solution was to basically integrate what was left of him into a mobile suit using the uh, AV or Alaya Vijnana system. They actually basically installed him into 
a giant graze. <laughs> and then, you know, the, the overall actual size was increased. The legs are longer, the arms are bigger. It's stronger and more powerful because it needed to be able to function a bit more like the human body because this does become a literal extension of his body. He feels and moves this thing with his mind directly. And that's really cool. They called it the true form of the Alaya Vijnana system. So this thing was just meant to wreck shop. And because of the feelings that Ayn had for Tekadon, for killing his uh, his uh, mentor and leader, Trunkni, you know, they, yeah. <laughs> it gets annoying listening to him constantly drone on about uh, Lieutenant Crank, Crunk, who, uh, well, got beat down in the first or second episode, I think. And so he basically spends the entire series... Um, basically chasing them down and trying to beat them. And this was finally the way he could have his solid revenge. And revenge he gets. Because he beats down everyone in Tekadon. You know, basically beats down all the Gundams. The Risei Go. The Hyakuren, which was actually Rue at that point. Beats down everybody. And you can see why. I mean, it is just massive compared to the other kits, you know. Compared, and I mean, everything within the same scale, this thing is huge, even compared to a normal graze, which we will get to later. Let's go ahead and pull him off of his stand, which, if you want to see this, hold on. He's actually touching the base, so he's not really being held up by the stand. His feet are actually touching the ground at the same time. So it's kind of funny. Those legs are that long. Let's have to stand aside, and we will try to get some up close shots of this guy if I can get him to fit in frame. I did a little bit of paint detail on this, but I still wanted it to be really dark and deep. So you got just some silver here and then over here in the giant joints. Now, I had a, I need to double check with it, but I thought originally when this thing came out that these joints were so large. Because, in fact, they were Ahab reactors, the power source for uh, the Gundams and for Grazes and any other mobile suit. And it would make sense that this thing would be so big and so powerful because it had so many reactors. But I, I actually need to look that up and check it out. You see back here, right here on the knee joint, painted that just a little bit silver. And then we come under here to these uh, thruster pods under the legs that I forgot about. Painted those silver as well. And then of course the axes, the the uh, front and rear edge of the blade, I painted that silver. You got a little bit on the handle there. I do love the storage of the weapons on the backpack. That is just so neat. It does actually articulate a little bit because he does need to be able to reach them whenever he wants. He has a really cool way he just reaches over his back and plucks them off. But compared to a normal graze, it's actually very similar when it comes to just this part. Internally, it's exactly the same as any other graze. Still has the chest pivot right there, you still get the waist articulation and even all the same, pretty much the exact same details you would always get. You know, you get the bands right through here, you get the fake hydraulics right there. And of course everything up to the backpack is exactly the same. You still get the same shoulder, chest crunch movement. Of course this side wants to move more than this side, I don't know what's going on. So it does actually move the same up to this point. These are new pieces right here just for this grace same thing with the chest piece is also new the head is all new even though it borrows some bits from a standard graze and it actually has a fun gimmick because it actually technically has two faces so it's got this that's going on here we come over here talk about the shoulders you get the standard ball joint right there the captured uh poly cap right there can pivot a little bit not a whole lot just give you a little bit of range of motion so he can reach up about that far this cool shoulder pot over here comes up about that far and we'll just ignore the fact that i just knocked that off and you can really stretch this arm up about come on get up there buddy yeah, it is really stiff guys really stiff so it can go up about that far so it doesn't reach up that far you do get the bicep rotation and we'll go ahead and pull that back down Gotta be careful because it is stiff. The back side is what's turning. And you get a really good elbow joint there. But unlike other ones, you actually get a forearm joint right here. So almost like a secondary elbow slash wrist. So you get the normal ball joint wrist with the really, really crappy hands. We'll talk about that in a second. 
but you get this cool joint so that he can actually reach up and over his backpack and get those uh, axes from back there. See, I'm knocking this one off too. Comes off really easy. And if you look down here, compared to a normal graze, the bicep is bigger. You've got the giant joint here. You actually got a good chunk of armor plating here. And of course the arm itself is totally different from basically the entire arm. There's no normal grace parts. So after the top, it's all brand new. Come down here, it's essentially the same as a grays. The armor is close, but new. You come to the butt back here, all new butt armor. And it does have pegs back here, like something should go there, but I don't know of any weapons that other than the axes he has that would peg back there, so I don't know what's missing. Come down to the legs, you get the standard hip joint, but it can't do splits. It can only go about that far. Both the armor is limiting it and the poly cap in there. You turn it this way, you're flexing the leg armor, but you do, or the butt armor, but you do get thigh rotation. It can't go too far because you'll stress this and it'll pop off. You do get some ridiculous up joints. Hold on. Skirt. Plus, split the skirts, guys. Always split the skirt. You get a great, great double jointed knee there, not to mention it is huge. Now, I think, if I remember correctly, part of the knee is still similar to a normal graze, but other than that, it's brand new from here down, because it's all really big. I love the great big knee armor right here. So basically, they took what was normal for a graze and supersized it. You know, they, they hit plus 20%, and it's awesome. Come down here, and you get this great giant one armor leg piece right through here, and you get the foot ankle guards down here now this thing has very very different feet in fact i'm just going to go ahead and pop that off right there <laughs> you know how it happens sometimes things just don't go your way now if you come back here this is actually where the gray's ankle would normally be and this has a tiny bit of movement not much just a tiny but you come all the way down here and in fact it can pivot up here on a nice little hinge but then you've got a ball joint for these really ridiculous, like, four-clawed feet. They really wanted this thing to look evil and very demon-like, which is weird because it's not one of the Gundams, which are actual demons. So the feet do have a gimmick, and we will cover that in a little bit. But in this version, these are just very static feet with kind of the ability to uh, just look menacing and pivot slightly. And I did come down here and paint it silver because these are really big thrusters. He is meant to move around. And he is very fast, agile, and maneuverable as big as it is. So let's talk about accessories real quick. Since we're here. You got these lovely forearm pile bunkers. I think that's what they were called. Basically, it's like a big hydraulic ram that just, boof, you know, pounds through things. Armor, especially, because that's what he does to virtually everyone he fights he literally beats down most of the team with just these things and honestly it has a few heartbreaking moments not gonna do any spoilers realistically but that is a heck of a weapon you've got one on either form now they look like missiles they're not they're literally like big jackhammers and that is actually pretty cool and it was made really for close combat it doesn't really have a lot of weaponry really it <laughs> but uh what it does have is mostly built onto it and I'll show that in just a second but these guys right here because it does have some guns it's got these little I think they're 40 millimeter machine guns if I remember correctly and these actually go in these shoulder pods so in the show this folds down this would fold out and around and it would start shooting at people and I love that they include these but I really wish they had given it the full gimmick because it wouldn't have taken a whole lot to make that actually function but it does look cool when they're on there but it's annoying that you have to install them just to use them it's it's like parts forming it's kind of annoying <laughs> it's pretty menacing and of course i wish they would pivot because they're just plugged in right here inside a little pig hole and this looks like it should pivot it doesn't of course it should have a hinge it should have a pivot joint in there and this should all fold up in and on itself and of course it does not now, I wanted to talk about these hands for a second because we're going to get to the axes right here. Let's go ahead and pull these guys off. You saw them from the backside, so no big surprise there. 
but what you do have, I'm going, there you go. You got this little tab here, that just is for mounting on the back side. But what you do have down here is tabs for it to plug into the hands. Now, this is one of the, uh, I don't want to say controversial, but most criticized parts of this entire kit. You've got the hand right here. They're stuck in an open claw kind of formation like this, like he's holding something really big. And you do have the port that the tab plugs into like so. But you see the hand right there it doesn't close around it. It's like it's meant to hold something much bigger, but they didn't bother giving you anything like that or the ability to close the hand. And that's the annoying part that most people have really criticized about it. I mean, they are really just very ugly formed hands. I mean, that's it. That's all you get. And then you get a gun that falls off. I'm not going to bother fixing that. But I will go ahead and close up the shoulder. So it can hold these axes. This is like one of its normal poses. Just very down. And I... Questioning look. Like, what did you say to me? <laughs> and it is a very menacing thing. Now that axe is so big. Compared to a standard graze axe. Here, let me grab one off of one of my other grazes laying around just so you can get an idea of scale. This is a standard graze axe. This is the graze Eins axe in comparison. Yeah, that thing is enormous. That's what, you know, they really, really wanted him to be able to do some damage. All right, so move on to a couple more of the accessories here. We have the other slightly controversial idea here, the drill feet. <laughs> you heard me, drill feet. Now, I don't really ever use these. In fact, I just clipped them off of the runner for this review so we could look at them. But what it does, you can just tell right there, the claws well, become drills. So this would close, of course, and that's literally how easy that comes off, just giant ball joint right there. And then it has the drill feet and yes it did use this as a weapon and just to show off this thing's flexibility and balance here let's see if i can get it to do it i hate uh, okay the back ankle armor is really annoying all right so let's see if i can get him to stand effectively there we go <laughs> he's moving around a little bit because i think the fan is blowing him but that this thing can do some great poses as long as you've got the big feet on it. It is annoying that they wouldn't give you the actual, really, like a real gimmick where these feet could have folded, but I understand it's an HG. They wanted to keep it cheap. That would have been a level of engineering that probably would have added probably five or six bucks just to the kit, just for the feet. And, I mean, these feet are menacing enough in and of themselves because... You gotta think about that. If you have a giant claw like that, it could just come in and kind of crush you. And this is another cool thing. Since it has all of that bend in its arm, you can see how it could reach back over its shoulder and get the axe off of his own back. But I love that. Okay, now we'll move on to his final little gimmick. And yes, it takes a little bit of parts forming, I understand, I'm sorry guys. But, it is in the head. Let me go ahead and take these out of his hands. And just, just because, I'll show, he does come with some closed hands. whoop de doo you're never going to use these because you want to use the axe. Now, his hands actually in the, in the show could drill. He could form little drill hands, but we're not even worried about that. Let's look at this head. Let's see if I can get some good lighting on the head here. So we can see, you got the gray, you got pretty much what looks like a standard little gray's eye in there, and the top of the head is very standard gray's-ish. However, what he can do, and this is a fun little thing, you get these little horns to flip forward. You pop that down, and while that's not the official transformation, that's the cheater's way, we'll go ahead and admit that. The his normal gray's eye is a giant demony red eye right there. And this is his angry mode, realistically. So you get those little horns flip forward 
and then you get to see that. And so he went from, you know, nice, easy, uh, innocent, just conversation, yellow eye thing here, and it flips down, and then you get the intimidating red eye of death. <laughs> it really, the way this thing was designed, color-wise, and with some of the weaponry, it is very, like, original Soundwave, or any of the versions of Soundwave, with that big red eye in there. Let me see if I can find the light for it. There we go. That is just awesome. So now you get this. Well, he basically goes nuts by the end of the series, realistically. By the time they stick him in this machine, and he realizes his own sense of power now, he kind of goes crazy. I think something about the uh, AV system drives him over the edge more than he was. He was never as violent. He abhorred violence and killing. And then he turned around and became a giant violent killer in this machine. So, honestly, Ayn's story was really sad. Because basically he gets used constantly. <laughs> so, let's go ahead and we'll get this big mean guy ready for going on the display. I'll just go ahead and I'll put his axes back on. But before we get that far, I'll go ahead and pull out one of the standard-ish grazes just so we can see a size comparison. And here we have Ryusei Go. And oddly enough, he's standing in a position to be shooting at nine. But you can just see the sheer size difference. This is the exact same scale, guys. This is both 1 one forty fourth scale. This thing is enormous. This thing is almost, like, maybe about an inch shorter shy of a master grade kit. Or even the standard 1 to 100 graze kits that you can buy for this series. It is absolutely enormous. I mean, they really, really wanted to give you a sense of danger and doom. Because for the most part, in the series, Tekadon meets and defeats all of their enemies as they go. You know, they they may come back, but they can beat everyone, either just with sheer will and determination, or they overpower them because they have a Gundam. This guy was the first true, real fight they kind of got. Of course, it was right near the end. So, where they came winning and winning and winning, they came across the Kray's Ein right near the end, and basically lost, for the most part, if not for the very end of the series. Like I said, they're... You know, their other Gundam, their other mobile suits, everything got beat down by this. Even by the end of the battle, Barbatos was a wreck, and so was Mikazuki. But let's go ahead and add this guy to the rest of his quote-unquote friends of the series. And we'll just go ahead right now. All right, guys, we have the big old IBO display out here now. And we're going to go ahead and find a home for... The Grey's Ein, this guy. Now, I will admit, this guy was not built yet when I just originally had this display. He was built after we had to move out of our previous place. So he's never been in this display before. But he's always had a home because I had always planned it this way. Now, I've got to do some quick posing on this guy. Because I wanted to have this, like, kind of, uh movie poster sort of idea going on here so you get the scattered view of all of the other characters and then in the back kind of towering is the enemy that you all have to face more or less and I just noticed that Grimgaard is entirely in the way of this <laughs> it's like dang it Grimgaard get out of the way I'm gonna have to fix it but there we go. He is now in the display. And oddly enough, he's hitting <laughs> he's hitting Gushin on that side and Grimgaard on that side. So I'm going to have to finagle that a little bit. Those will probably come down just a peg or so. But that is it for these IBO pre-built kits. Now I have a couple others I'm going to add so this display is not finished. It's just finished up till this point. So let me go ahead. I'm going to bring this down here and aim it up. Sorry, my tripod gets a little wonky sometimes. There we go. All right, guys. If you really like 
what I've done here. Make sure you like and subscribe if you haven't already. Check out the rest of the IBO builds and reviews and see how this ridiculous display of mine has come together over the last couple weeks. And then uh, if you like these kits, get out there, buy them. They're really cheap and easy as we've talked about through all of this. And uh, yeah, I mean, I've enjoyed putting this together. It was fun. I mean, I got to see my kids for the first time in a few months. And well, I got to finally kind of really finalize this display how I wanted it. And I think I'm going to have to lower Barbato's six form down a little bit. I think he's a little too central. Like he's actually blocking. <laughs> he's, he's, he's blocking Grayzine and I need him to actually display Grayzine. So... All right, we will finagle this over time. Like I said, I have a couple more kits that I need to get built and added to this, and it'll be fine. But all right, that's it for the Gray's Ein review, guys. Catch you next time, and remember to always keep on building.